Don't crash the car, please. Huh? Don't crash the car. It's not mine, I don't care. Uh, yeah, but it's mine. I mean. <laughs> I don't understand anyway. Right, just go right. Left or right? I left. There's been many historic races here, but the feeling is different to anywhere else. It's, it's different to be in Italy with these guys. Uh, it's something you can't really put into words, but it's, it's magic, especially when you see the guys, let's say the Tifosi and the fans outside supporting everyone in red. This always gives you that little bit of extra kind of uh, motivation to, to, to do well for them. This wasn't your car. Yeah, but it's my... I'd, I'd see how far I can <laughs> jump the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the My record is about 20 you meters. You get the ticket with the uh, Sandu. Uh, I have a picture on my WhatsApp of me when I was uh, six years old, stood next to Michael Schumacher's uh, uh, Ferrari. So I've always had a passion for Ferrari. From the moment I was 10 years old, I was already in Italy uh, working with Italian guys. So being English, I kind of have a not English style, but a very much Italian style, the way to work. 20, 20 euros. Not to me. Yeah. I ran the car. Yeah, but I drove. Yeah, but I ran the car. <laughs> it's mine, I had a car, so... Well, it's not really yours, it's Ferrari. Uh, anyway, it's more mine than yours. As drivers now, currently in GT, we're developing the hypercar and uh, hopefully we can be part of that in, in the future. Ferrari now development is underway. Um, we know that Toyota, for example, has had so much success, but we're we're pushing hard to come here, come back after so many years. Ascari, I turn, I have understeer on the left. Then on the right, I have oversteer. Lesmo one and two. The, the car is turning with the rear, and I'm managing a bit. I mean, it's not like I'm I'm pushing. I'm I'm trying to save the tire. I know all the guys in F1. I know all the guys in the road car production, and they all know us. So the family is very strong. The bond is is uh, is unique to any any other team in motorsport. Just uh, finished kind of our pre session briefings over at Glickenhaus, getting everything ready for the first pre practice of the weekend. And now I'm on the way to the Peugeot conference uh, as we're doing a little bit of media for the launch of the 9x8 for 2022. Hello, so I'm going to change again. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Qualifying on the front row at Le Mans, winning in LMP2, eventually finishing P3 and then P2 in the overall. We are one position away and uh, every year it seems to be one step closer. So there's not too many steps left to getting to the top, but hopefully in the next year or two, I will have this opportunity um, in that new hypercar. Yeah, and you? Fuck. Just running back running, and forth. You're yeah. the same, huh? Yeah, yeah. Man, because now the team is like, ah, at 2.30 we have a pre-event, uh, pre-test uh, meeting. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then it's, it's fine. We're going to be here. Yeah. Be okay. As a kid watching Le Mans on television, it was always a dream and you know when you're a kid you don't think about the difficulties to arrive there, you just think I want the best, I want this, I want that and uh, uh, fortunately through perseverance, the right timing, a bit of luck and hard work from the ones around me and myself, here we're standing. Every time I look at it I get goosebumps and I just think hopefully there will be many more small kids with posters of this in their house dreaming the same way and achieving this goal in 20 30 years you know from the 
training camp I tore two tendons from the weight and it the problem is impingement so it healed over the top. And you need to do some exercise. Yeah, I have no pain but they said I need to do it. The only things can happen is hitting me the, the last thing in the face. <laughs> no! <laughs> No? Uh, we like to, to joke between us, so it's funny to be relaxed at least before the start. And then uh, when the storm starts, uh, the, the, you have just one target. because they realized the tracks mm -hmm. a bit different to yesterday so some rain would be nice yeah I think so yeah so run want to be good luck thank, thank you, you. Il lanciamento sembra ok. Un filo sotto forse? Sì. Mm. Just a bit. Uh, not sure. The uh, front were a bit uh, on the cool side. Exactly. So I don't want to change now because every time we change, we, we, we raise the rear. Excuse me? You raise yes, the rear. Yes. Yes. Maybe it, maybe, no, maybe it was one. from a few months ago. Maybe. <laughs> May, I'm sure I had to be skinnier you than doing? you, man. That's so easy. I could fit in there, I think. Probably, man. I had to be about 61. <laughs> I'll see you later. Red lights out and we are racing the first ever world endurance race at Monza. It's a Toyota front row lockout. Mike Conway controls the inside line from teammate Sebastian Buemi into the Retifilio for the very first time. Andre Negrau, the blue Alpine and two Glickenhausen's right behind and Negrau grabbing second place immediately from Buemi, the GT cars. That is the pole man, Kevin Esch, ahead of Alessandro Pierre Guidi and a change there for second in GTEM. Riding on board with the 91 Porsche and the number eight Toyota back up into second place using the hybrid power to go back past. But Andre Negrau in the Alpine looking to take the battle to the Toyotas early. Into the Retifilio, Toyota not able to use their hybrid boost at this stage. And look at Negrau, all the Alpine's power comes on song. He grabs second place, but once the hybrid is available, Sebastian Buemi drives back past in Curva Grande. Lots of action in GTE Am 83. The chrome Ferrari of Alessio Rivera started last in the pack and he's just gone by Pierre Eret in the Rinaldi Racing Ferrari. Eret's the red car with lots of pressure from behind. Tomonobu Fuji in the D station Aston Martin goes by him on the straight. Richard Westbrook in the second of the Glickenhaus cars just going by Pipo Durrani. James Glickenhaus brought one of his brand new hypercars to Portimao a month ago. Now, both of them that will race at Le Mans are having their final shakedown. 
Ferrari battle for second place here at Monza in GTE Am. The blue Chetelar car got eased out of second at the start. And now the 54A, of course, of Ferrari of Francesco Castellacci up the inside. And that is a change. Toyota 1-2 out front in the hypercar class. As in the first two races of the season, the number seven car seems to have a slight speed advantage over number eight, which has two wins so far from this season's two races. Chetelar's Roberto Lacorte under pressure for third place in GTE Am. Alessio Rivera around the outside, the brave way into Ascari. Couldn't get to the second apex in time, but he is piling on the pressure. Right behind Egidio Perfetti, the former GTE Am champion in his Porsche. Trouble for Iron Lynx. The number 60 car was wrecked in free practice, has a new front end, but it looks like they've got more problems than just the body. OK, so car seven, same target, consuming more, slightly more. In Portobello, the number eight Toyota managed to beat the faster number seven sister car on fuel economy. Clearly, they are trying the same again here at Monza. Number seven car this time is not going to be caught out by that same strategy, though. Battle for third place in hypercar. Andre Negrao in the Alpine being chased down by Richard Westbrook in the Glickenhaus. Come on, Richard. Go, Richard. I lost a little bit of flowers. That explains why Negrao has dropped back from the Toyotas. There is the Alpine team watching with bated breath. And Westbrook closing in looking to try and put a Glickenhaus into a potential podium position early in the race. Hugely encouraging performance from the Glickenhaus. The second car with a slight issue has dropped back, though. Toyota's Mike Conway and Sebastian Buemi running 1-2. And this looks like their race to lose at the moment. Monza has a habit of producing drama, though. One of the oldest racetracks on the planet. In LMP2 on board, the real team at Racing Car, Lloyd Duval, turned around or spun at the Retifilio, turned around, and that is Alex Brandl in the Inter Europol car, the yellow and green. Looks like that was a lunge too late. Stewards will look at it. Andrew Harianto in the Dempsey Proton Porsche, looping around into the gravel here at the Roggia, and it is a yellow flag. Full course yellow is out 30 minutes into the race. Will we see a flurry of pit stops? 7.08, the Glickenhaus is in, but this is for attention rather than fuel. It hasn't been running right. Of course, this is all preparation for Le Mans. Everything they learn now could help them in the 24-hour race in August. Race leaders are in. Toyota number seven already receiving service. Number eight comes in behind. Alpine in third place, also in the pits. And Glickenhaus cover that off. Some of the LMP2 cars will stay out. GT cars also taking fuel. Most of them would have needed a splash at the end. Two, one, full course yellow removed. Back to green flag racing and Oli Jarvis in the Risi Competizione car jumps Henrik Hedman at dragon speed. His pit lane speed limiter, it looked like, did not release. Now he is up to speed again. That's a change for third place in GTE Pro, I think. Italian Jimmy Bruni sailing up the inside of the Ferrari to grab third. That won't please the fans who are back in the grandstands at last. Uh, of course, it's really a fantastic day because we are back here in Monza uh, uh, since uh, many, many months uh, waiting for this uh, day, this evening.
it's really a, a, a fantastic feeling to, to hear the sounds of, of the motor. If you say Monza, you, you always think about the Tifos. And today we are 1,000, but uh, you, can, you can feel the passion. Even if we are low with the number of Tifos, we are, we are so passionate about the sport. So, yeah, Monza is always about Tifos. The World Endurance Championship, uh, it's fantastic. Forza Ferrari. On board with Sebastian Buemi in rush hour traffic here at Monza. Multi-class racing means loads of cars. Oliver Webb in the ARC Bratislava Ligier in perhaps its final race as they change to an Orica chassis at Le Mans. Going by Henrik Hedman, Tatiana Calderon, the red and black number one machine, also going past the Dane. Hedman's job is not to fight the faster pro drivers, but to lose as little time as possible before handing over to this man, a Grand Prix winner on his last appearance at Monza, Juan Pablo Montoya. Race lead battle in LMP2, Phil Hansen ahead of Robin Freens. The Team WRT crew looking for some good luck here. And 29 leading Pro-Am, but in third overall, Racing Team Netherlands. Under the banking they come, Mike Conway, Toyota number seven, still our race leader in the hypercar class. Phil Hansen in LMP2 for United. Kevin Esch leads a dogfight in GTE Pro. And Francois Perodo, the 83 Ferrari from the back of the grid, leads in GTE Am. One of the Glickenhaus is going strongly. What was the issue with the other? 709 is running really well. We're very happy with the speed. Um, and I think we can do very well. 708 went out on seven cylinders. One of the spark plugs was broken, so that's what it was. But if you look at his times now, it's running the same speed as the top two Toyotas. So that was just a silly thing with a broken spark plug. We fixed it, and now it's running. Yep, I think it was six cylinder, six, and box, box in the top door, tie versions, tie versions. Andre Negrau in the pit lane for Alpine. They lose third place. The Glickenhaus will go through into a podium spot after 90 minutes of racing. Oh, trouble for Cetila, the Ferrari in the AM class in the barriers. It was crashed in free practice and spins off the curbs in Lesmo 2, back into the wall. There's damage on the front of the 91 Porsche. Was there contact going in? Oh, no, but he couldn't avoid the spinning Roberto Lacourt. The guy is off of it, just lost the car completely. Copy, copy. Damage on the front of the Porsche. That won't help their cause on this high-speed circuit. Disturbing the aerodynamics might affect the cooling as well. And with the car in the barriers, another drama. Okay, the car's not driving. Right, put it back on. Feel free, feel free. No Brendan Hartley has only just taken over Toyota number eight. Fuel bump. Fuel bump. Yeah, I'm trying everything. Hey, can you do the third? Hartley is crawling along, working his way through the electronic controls on the steering wheel, trying to reset what it sounds like a fuel pump issue. The team are going to have to work on it in the garage, and that is any chance of winning this race potentially shot down for the number eight Toyota. Our championship leaders are in trouble. Fourth place battle in LMP2. Risi Competizione, their first world endurance race in a long while. This is their warm up for Le Mans. And the Jota Sport car goes around the outside. Ryan Cullen losing ground to Sean Galeil, the Asian Le Mans series champion. GTE Pro battle for the lead. 
In the last two races, it was honours fairly much even in Spa, but Porsche took a hammering from Ferrari. They ran out of tyres constantly in the heat in Portimao. More temperate conditions here and the Porsche is hanging on. But Alessandro Pierre Guidi, an Italian at Monza in a Ferrari, needs no more incentive than the flags waving in the grandstand and a car in front. Back out into the fray after about four and a half minutes in the garage is the number eight Toyota. Not even in the top 20, it is now fifth in the hypercar class. A, of course, a pit stop, and this should be a driver change. Alessandro Pierre Guidi follows in Kevin Est. Est handing over to his teammate Neil Gianni, and the fresh James Collado takes over the Ferrari. The battle resumes on track immediately. On board with Brendan Hartley. Oh my goodness, nearly rammed the back of the 98 Aston. He went straight through the chicane, could not get the car stopped. More trouble at Toyota. We are not sure ourselves at the moment what has happened, uh, but uh, apparently there is some malfunction on the steering wheel uh, and that uh, has caused the problems with uh, Brendan in his outlap and then uh, yeah, now he's pushing a bit, maybe a bit too hard uh, to see that, but uh, it seems that it's going. So I don't hear him at the moment, I cannot tell you exactly what's going on, uh, but uh, he's driving. So let's see and uh, hopefully we continue and uh, try to come back up onto the grid. What a heart-in-the-mouth moment for Brendan Hartley. Almost rams the car in front. And that is a major issue. That is not electronics. Something inside that left front corner has machined itself to pieces. Richie, if we stop fuel saving, do you have space to pass the Ferrari? Question. I got sorry. OK, please try. We'll give it five laps. For those five laps, no fuel save, try and get past the Ferrari. Porsche team very much aware that fuel will be an issue at the end of this race in GT. They're giving Richard Leitz a chance to get off the leash and try and attack the Ferrari for third place. Porsche leading at the moment. Ferrari with a second and third place. Number eight Toyota back out of the pit lane, but it has now lost 10 laps to the leader and potentially is in danger of not doing enough race distance to classify for points. They cannot afford any more problems. Four-way battle in LMP2 for fifth position. Racing Team Netherlands, Fritz van Eyde. Behind him, the red car, Ryan Cullen. That's Risi. Red and white, Jan Magnussen for high class. And 34 coming from behind, Renga van der Zander. They're going two by two, three wide down the straight nearly. This is van der Zander's view from on board into Europol competition. Ooh. And the Porsche is going to play a big part here. Fritz van Ed slips down the inside. Oh! <laughs> All three cars going for the apex behind him. Through comes van der Zander. The loser there was Ryan Cullen. He got held up by the Porsche. Van der Zander jumped Jan Magnussen. And now Renga chasing Ryan down. Drama for Ben Keating, a huge explosion on the left front of the GTE AM leader. He was due to pit and look at the debris field. Huge destruction on that left front corner. This is going to be a long job for TF Sport. I kept telling you, you know, you're asking if there's a vibration. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. The whole car is... Uh, the whole car is shaking. What, yeah, is it a safety car now? Looking at the last time, we didn't realize how bad it was. No, the it was terrible. Was still... Terrible. I should have. I should have been more vocal. Well, let's put one in. Coming up. 
Back to green flag racing after the safety car. GTE Pro Battle works its way through the Amfield. This is for the lead. James Collado in the Ferrari trying to sail around the outside into the Parabolica. He's got a really good run going on the Porsche of Neil Jarney. Can he get in front? Neil Jarney says no. Takes the outside of the track away from the Ferrari. Down the straight, here we go. Heading towards the Retifilio, passing the fans. LMP2 car shoots by, now does that give an opportunity? Collado being very brave on the outside into the Retifilio, wheel to wheel, and that gives him the apex in the inside. Now he eases Johnny into the gravel, and through goes the 91 Porsche. Ferrari leads in GTE Pro. Another classic Porsche Ferrari battle. This is part of the history of endurance racing. Uh, yeah, it will continue, I think, until the end. At the moment, we are P2, P3. Uh, we are recovering uh, some time that we lost. Uh, it's looking OK. Uh, still uh, more than half and a half of the race to go. Let's see. You will get him in 2 one You will get him in 2 one Be smart, mate. You can do it. Well, there's the challenge for Antonio Felix da Costa in the Jota Sport car, closing on Renga van der Zander. The Inter Europol team from Poland in third at the moment. And van der Zander's got the inside in the second part. He uses all the racetrack, and Antonio Felix da Costa in the gravel. The reigning Formula E champion will not appreciate that very much. Straight back from the race in New York. Overhead, the Goodyear airship. Antonio Felix da Costa trying again. This time, I think he may not go outside Renga van der Zander. On board with the Dutchman. Down the inside, a late send from Antonio Felix da Costa. And this time, he grabs the podium spot. Toyota number eight heading into the pit lane. This is not a scheduled stop. On board with the number eight car, heading down under the banking and suddenly, boo, it's all slowing down. It looks like they have not cured their fuel issues. And once more, the car goes into the garage, depressing for the number eight team. The only slight ray of light is that this is not Le Mans. Ferrari leading the Porsche duo in GTE Pro. 92, Neil Jarni trying to come back and catch his teammate. Richard Leitz is right in front. And Neil Jarni has tried a pass, didn't quite get it right though. Number eight Toyota back into the fray. We've said this a few times in the race already. This is not their day. More pit stops in GTE Pro. Left side tyres only is the order of the day. They're the ones that do all the work here. Porsche trying to get Neil Jarni's right side tyres to do four stints. And again, they win the battle in the pit lane. This time, though, it's not a four second advantage over Ferrari. It's just about half a second as they come out of the pits. Oh, with Gustavo Menezes going straight on at the Retifilio. Brand new Glickenhaus with more teething issues. It's becoming their problem child, like number eight is for Toyota. Into the pits comes Menezes and straight back in the garage. Boxes. Yeah, I, I tried as long as I could, but it started to get dangerous. No, it's, it's not. It's your box really quick. It goes seven to six and falls neutral. And then it would go into anti stall. I had to stop at the apex with cars coming and re engage the clutch. And uh, man, I got to uh, Ascari and I pulled on the left and there was cars coming and I was like, oh, f man. And. Uh, and then when that happened, I was like, okay, it's time to, I can't go anymore. For, for the upshift, you always have to clutch? Yeah. Um, yeah, for, no, for four to six. For four you go to fourth, six. Fourth, pam, pam, sixth, and then go. Okay, 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 okay. 
Third in LMP2 and trouble for Antonio Felix de Costa, the 38 Joe to car slowing right down. Alpine's Mathieu Vazivier under pressure from Franck Mayer in the Glickenhaus. This is for second place and they are catching Antonio Felix de Costa. The Jota car now looks like it's back up to speed in the middle of this battle. But he's slow, slow on the exit of Ascari. Mayer just avoiding trouble, but that has cost him time. And the Jota car very slow onto the straight. I'm sure that that is headed for the pits. Meanwhile, the battle for second place behind the lead Toyota, Alpine versus Glickenhaus. Into the garage goes the 38 Jota Sport car. It's the switch, it's the switch. It's the main, it's the injection switch. It's going on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. It's electrical, yeah, on the switch. Battle for second place, still very much alive. Alpine ahead of Glickenhaus and Alessio Rivera has to turn in in the GTEM leading Ferrari. Just between the two cars, a brief respite for Mathieu Vazivier in the second place Alpine, the blue car. But right behind him again, Franck Mayer. This is exactly what Glickenhaus are looking for, a super competitive race. And they take second place as Alpine stops. Mathieu Vazivier handing over to Nico Lapierre. The battle will continue. I'm sure Vazivier enjoyed that. It was okay for us. I mean, uh, we just uh, delivered our best. We tried to, to prove that, uh, that we are here. And, uh, but yeah, it was, we struggled a bit compared to the Toyota. For sure, we are a bit slower. And the temperature didn't help us as well. So, I mean, we will do to do no mistake until the end of the race. This is our main target. Toyota number seven leading the race, Jose Maria Lopez, Glickenhaus second, Alpine in third place. And fourth overall, the LMP2 leading number 22 from United Autosports. Half the race done, half the race still to go. And Toyota with only one healthy car in the fight, but you can only win with one car. United leading racing team Nederland and Jota in LMP2. Porsche, Ferrari, Porsche, Ferrari. Familiar look to GTE Pro. GTE Am, Porsche now back at the top of the pile as they cycle through the pit stops and hunt the Toyota. There is the number eight car in 34th place, the last running car on track. Fantastically tight battle as ever in LMP2. Second place at WRT. They were fueling when the safety car came out. That cost them lots of time to their rivals, but they are fighting back into it now. It was really good, I think. Um, got in the car, uh, went from second to first in the undercut, so I pushed a lot on the first couple laps, which gave us the lead um, straight up to the first pit stop, so that's really cool. Uh, then, unfortunately, in the safety car, we missed uh, a great opportunity to be far in the lead, which put us back down to P5, which is really disappointing, but uh, we're trying to can't get back up there now. Race leader into the pits. This will be a driver change. Lopez handing over to Kamui Kobayashi. But Toyota know that if there are any major dramas for the number seven car, their hopes of a third straight hypercar win could easily evaporate. Alpine's Nico Lapierre pushing as hard as he can in second place to catch the Toyotas. Pro-Am leaders in the pits. The braking felt a bit different, like it was slippery on track. Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't know, it was just said, relax, all you can do yeah. is it's what we need to do. You've got to remember, it's really hot today as well. Man. So it's like, you know, everything's it's got different. got a big influence on uh, yeah. braking. So. Okay. He so said, relax. do you come in? He said, no, one more lap. If I, we have come in, then... <laughs> okay, we got 
got lucky, we're allowed to do the pass around, so it's good. Yes. That was lucky. Yes. 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 It's all good. Over two hours of racing still to go. Here's our GTE AM leader, Alessio Rivera, back in the car. Started it at the back of the grid and took the lead in GTE AM. His teammates have cycled through as well. There's Francois Perodo. He's done his time in the car in the middle stint, hoping now for victory. Meanwhile, 91 Porsche. Oh, sells on at the Roger. That is going to cost him third place to the Ferrari. Comes back in front, but can't take advantage. He will need to give that place away, I think. Richard Leeds at least uses the approved manner of getting back on. Driver change leads to Bruni. They are in fourth position. Fresh rubber going on. Again, left sides only. Kevin Escher limbering up. Helps his teammate Neil Jarni out of the GTE Pro leading Porsche. As the Ferrari stop continues. Collado to Pierre Guidi. I cannot overtake because the Aston is much faster than I am on the straight. I lose so much time with the traffic in the first team. GTE AM leader Alessio Rivero in the AF Corsa Ferrari. One of the advantages that the AM cars have is they have more fresh tyres than the pro cars. That makes them even harder for the pros to get by. Rivera leading from the D station, Aston Martin in second place. Drama for Toyota. Which car is that? Stopped at the side of the track. That is the race leader. That is Kamui Kobayashi. You stop on the side and you for a cycle. For a cycle. Stop on the side for a cycle. And look at the standings on the left. He is no longer the race leader. Glickenhaus lead in Monza. Kobayashi has got going again, slowly, but now it looks like he's got proper power. There is the race leader. Roman Duma for Glickenhaus. Leads in Monza. Toyota number seven back up to speed. Looking very calm, James Glickenhaus. I think I'd be leaping up and down like a lunatic. Into the pits they come. So took the lead on its in-lap. And look at the colour of the car, covered in brake dust. And 709, the race leader, going into the garage. They've retired 708 with a gearbox issue. Is that happening here as well? Toyota number seven, stopped at the side of the track, back up to speed. Now the race leader wants more. What a crazy race here in Monza. Sounds as though the number seven car is working properly now. The fans, I'm sure, not wishing to gamble anything on this. Into the pits, a little out of schedule comes Toyota number seven. Kamui Kobayashi apparently reporting a tyre issue warning light in the car. So they're taking no chances. Alpine leads the hypercar class and leads the race in Monza. Who is going to finish in front? Fine battle shaping up here between Nick de Vries in the yellow and black racing team Netherland car and Tom Blomqvist for Jota. The Pro-Am leader in fourth place in LMP2. Jota's Tom in fifth position. He's been stalking his rival for the last few laps. Can't quite get close enough here. Not really picking up a big enough slipstream on the straight to be in a position. 
Contact again with the Inter Europol car, this time with the number 20 high class racing entry. This was not for position. Oh, the high class car was being lapped and still closed the door. This is for position. Dennis Anderson with Juan Pablo Montoya around his nose. This time he avoids contact and the Dragon Speed car takes eighth and moves up in Pro-Am into second place. Yes, the Colombian is a happy man. Team WRT into the pit lane from second in LMP2. And the final driver change of the race for them as we head into the last 90 minutes. Charles Milesi handing over to Robin Freens. They drop to third in the pit stop cycle. United Auto Sports' Fabio Scherer delighted to be back in the car. He had to miss Portimao because of a positive COVID test. Driver change and Felipe Albuquerque will take over the United car to run to the flag. Risi Competizione, hugely experienced US sports car crew, but they've got very little experience here in Europe. The tyres and everything are different. Oli Jarvis has just completed his stint. Going to compare notes with teammate Felipe Nasa. The whole car was just sliding. From the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's like I had, you know. It's... It's too biased for high speed and we're not protecting the rears enough. I just felt like for Ascari, so every corner to the left, I would have some understeer. So going into Ascari, the first part. Yeah, but then I would, I would slide. And then I would through. slide yeah. and then understeer again. Could be, could be that we lost the dive plane. I mean, we're talking small, but for me, the, if the rear bar with if with the softer rear bar, I think we would have protected the rear enough. Well, we need, definitely it's, it's too much of a quali car. Yeah. Battle for third place in GTE Pro. Once again, Italy's Jimmy Bruni about to break the hearts of the Italian Tifosi as he goes by the Ferrari for third place, or does he? Yes, Miguel Molina has to tuck in behind. In the pre-event press conference, he was asked whether he would mind upsetting the Italian fans as an Italian here. He said, no, if it means that I move forward, that's always the target. Jimmy Bruni, faithful to his employer. Pit stop for Toyota number seven. This is now a scheduled stop. Here comes the Alpine will take the race lead at the line inside the final hour. Still no idea who is going to win in any of our four classes. Alpine back in front in hypercar. United just behind them, leading in LMP2, but they're under pressure too. Another topsy-turvy race. What do they think inside the garage at Toyota? It's been crazy, but we are prepared for that. You know, we kind of know how hard it is. So, yeah, we managed to have a good ry rhythm. Kamui did a fantastic job, and then we have to see the strategy, how he's going to play in the end. But, uh, yeah, let's hope that everything comes together and we can bring back home uh, the, the trophy. Inside the final hour, 92 Porsche still leading in GTE Pro, 83 Ferrari in AM, United leading in LMP2, and the race leader is the Alpine. GTE AM leader in for a regulation stop. And this should be the last one before the chequered flag for AF Corsa's car number 83. A fresh set of rubber goes on all round. They're anticipating a battle to the checker. And it has been a battle from back to front all the way through the race. This who took the start. He did a great job, uh, handed the car P1. And of course, I mean, that's racing. We were helped by the safety car. So I did the job for my drive time, and then uh, hopefully the boys will bring her home on the top step, fingers crossed. Maggio Vazivier in the pits and out of the race lead. This fuel stop, the final one for Alpine, and that cycles Mike Conway's Toyota back to the top of the pile with just under 40 minutes left to race. Toyota lead. 
And the Alpine will need to produce something special to snatch victory here. The number seven car should have the pace to stay in front. But Glickenhaus looking for a podium. Full course yellow, debris at Ascari. And the debris is the inside curbing. This will be a long one. That's it, that's it. They will decide, the guy continue. Maybe it's okay for them, or they will beat. So, will Toyota gain from the full course yellow? They do indeed need fuel to make it through safely to the end. So it will be a short fill for the number seven car. And that takes the game away from Alpine. The time to hunt down the Toyota will be shorter. Full course yellow, everybody on the pit lane, speed limiters in the pit lane and on track. A short fuel for the 91 Porsche as well. The GT cars were still short on fuel. But they will have to box as well, no? They might come the next lap when they realise they didn't jump us. If I was them, I'd have done exactly that, done the opposite to us. So I think they might try and gamble and save fuel to the end. We, we were literally on a coin toss, on a coin toss, sorry. But we had the gap so we could do it. So now we stay out and let me know how many laps go. We currently 28 minutes remaining. So Porsche stopped for fuel. Ferrari have gambled that they won't need to. This could be a very entertaining end to the race. This is really a ping pong game. Uh, and uh, just right now we had to come for a splash and dash. They didn't. So now the gap is just uh, very close. So let's see. Um, hopefully they have to save some fuel now and then we can pull the gap up again. But let's see. Full course yellow removed. Full course yellow removed. Mike Conway back up to speed but can't deploy the hypercar's drive below 130 kilometers an hour. And that means the LMP2 car pulls away initially. Now he can use that four-wheel drive boost and goes by. Last few minutes of the race, Kevin Esch has been under real pressure from Ferrari's Alessandro Pierre Guidi. Porsche stopped under the full course yellow, gave away track position almost for fuel. And now Pierre Guidi in the final two and a half minutes has to peel into the pits. They came up a lap or two shy on fuel. They rolled the dice. It was their only chance to beat Porsche here in Monza. Drama at the end of the race for GTE Am as well. 98 Aston Martin attacking 777, the D station Aston for second place. And Augusto Farfus has been held off for several laps by Tomonobu Fuji, but he is just going to squeeze around the outside here. Victory in Monza for Toyota behind the Porsche 92 car. That takes the GTE Pro Class win. Some nervous smiles on the Toyota pit wall, but they have victory in Monza. A crucial first win of the season for Mike Conway, Jose Maria Lopez and Kamui Kobayashi, the number seven crew. Victory in LMP2 for United Autosports, back to their winning ways. Phil Hansen, Fabio Scherer and Donutting King, Felipe Albuquerque. <laughs> Ferrari gambled and lost. Porsche win in GTE Pro in Monza. Oh, mate. Can be one. Joy though for Neil Jarney and Kevin S. The 92 Porsche wins in Monza. But for the Tifosi, there is a Ferrari victory. Francois Perodo, Nick Nielsen, and Alessio Rivera claim the GTE Am prize. For the number seven Toyota team, a vital victory. They closed down on their teammates in the championship.
Alpine take second spot and United are third overall after the problems for both of the Glickenhaus cars and the number eight Toyota. The car was so bad in the front. And on the curbs, I think the suspension or something. But they always been quick and slower than us in the store and now they start to be quick. Good race. Well done, boys. Good race. The gap didn't move from 10 seconds the whole race. The whole race. Maximum six something or six something and then from the time. After a titanic battle, Ferrari's gamble left them two laps shy of victory. Porsche first and third in Monza, Ferrari second and fourth. But this epic clash of the titans remains just as tight as ever. Ferrari still with a slight upper hand in the points. Pro-Am winners racing Team Netherlands ahead of Dragon Speed and Real Team, relishing the moment on top of one of the most famous podiums on the planet. For now, it's Arrivederci Monza. Next stop, Bienvenue au Monde.